Welcome to LabList.com. In the previous video, we have configured device admin authentication using Cisco ICE, and any user with a valid account, whether it's on AD or local to ICE, can pretty much access our switch. What if you want to restrict access to only user that belongs to a certain user group? This is where authorization comes into play, which is what exactly we will be configuring in this video. So in our scenario, we have three user account, admin one, employee one that's on AD, and local one that's local to ICE. We're now going to create group called network admin on AD and LM network admin on ICE. And those are the two groups that will be allowing access to the switch. So the employee one would not have access to the switch. Again, let's begin our configuration on the switch. And since we have all the AAA enable already for authentication. The only command that we need is to switch on authorization. And the command that you need is AAA authorization. And we want to use exec for shell, as you can see right here. And this access to the command line with the default group of radius and we want to fall back to if authenticated. Okay, now the rest of our config configuration will be on the I server. Okay, first up we're gonna have to configure a user group on ICE and I believe we call it LM network dash admin. Okay, so go ahead and add lm dash network dash admin. Submit. You can also see ICE comes by default with various other groups that you can use as well. That's why I personally like to put a, a name in front of, um, of whatever name that you give when you're configuring ICE. So for us it's lm so you can quickly identify that's the one that we can figure ourselves. Also, if there's opportunity to make it all caps, we do the same just for that purpose. All right, now we need to add the local user, local one, to the group that we just created. So we'll check on that, click edit. And in here for user group, you select LM network admin. Okay, save. Now let's jump to the authorization policy. Now just to show you, there are two ways to uh, configure the condition. So let's add new rule above, and right here, condition. You can either select from uh, existing condition from library, or you can do advanced option, which is you specify all the different condition on the fly right here. Uh, let me show you how to configure one in the library. So where we go is policy, policy elements and conditions and we're dealing with authorization and we want to select compound condition. Okay, we'll click add and we'll call it LM device admin AD. Okay, we're going to go and create new conditions right here. First, we're going to add the AD group. So we said we want to allow network admin AD group to access the device. So here, AD external groups, and that you then select. It looks like we have not added yet. So we have to go to the external identity source, go to new windows. Active Directory, under Group, we have Add, Select from Directory, and to show you, we already have that created Network Admin Group right here, and we are going to search for that. So Group start with the word Network, and right here, Network Admin, so select, then OK, and then go ahead and Save Config, then let's go back to our page here. It looks like it doesn't get refresh. Let's go and kind of click around on that. And now the group gets 
update it in this drop down right here. And we select network admin. And also you want to, just like how you configure the authentication policy itself, you want to make sure you you configure a very specific condition just to match the the request, the uh, authentication authorization request that you need. So in the previous video, we have identified uh, some of the attributes that we can use to characterize the request for device ad admin. So one would be the network access authentication method. And we said it was show us PAP and ASCII. Let's add one more. And that was the other one was radius attribute called um, NAS port type. And here we do virtual. One thing I did not mention in the previous video was virtual is only for the VTY access. If you were to do console type of authentication, then it would have been async. But here we're just dealing with telnet or SSH, so we're going to do virtual. Now go ahead and submit. So that's for condition. Now, once the user or the authentication authorization has been matched by the rule, now you need to decide what kind of privilege you want to grant to that particular user, and that is control by the authorization results or authorization profile right here. Okay, let's say for an AD, a user admin one that belongs to network admin group, we want to immediately grant privilege 15 to that user when, it tries to, when he tries to access a switch. So the way to do that is to create an authorization profile and we're going to name it, it's just trying to be descriptive. Let's call it LM permit priv 15. Access type, we want to do access except, and these are the common radius attribute that you can use, but none of those really meets our requirement, which is our uh, shell privilege that we want to um, grant to the user. To grant privilege 15 to user through radius attribute, we need Cisco. Let's wait uh, for a few seconds while it's loading. And then Cisco AV pair. And you want to make sure you do not have any typo here. So it would be shell priv dash LVL equal 15. Okay, make sure there's no typo right here. Now it's the attribute, the actual radius attributes down here gets updated and it shows right here for our shell privilege. Click submit. All right. I mean, there are few are the ones that's, that's come default with ICE, for example, deny access, permit access, and for IP phone and black hole. We're just going to use one that we created now that we have both conditions and results. We'll go back to the authorization policy page, create a new one. So insert new rule above. We'll call it LM device admin, and this one is specifically for AD user. For condition, now that we have previously configured the condition, we can now select from the library. It's going to be compound condition, and we call it LM device admin AD. And here is a quick um, summary of the expression. You just review it, make sure that's correct. And as far as the permission that you want to grant to that once that particular rule has been matched, we have already configured a standard LM permit per 15. Okay, so that's done. And again, there's no need, once you have a more specific rule configured on top, there's no need for the default anymore, unless you have a good reason to, otherwise we change it to deny. So save. Okay, now let's get our switch ready for a quick test. We're gonna enable debug radius authentication. Let's do telnet. Actually, let's clean up the page real quick. T 
telnet to loopback and we're going to use admin1 password cisco you can see right here we drop right into the hash prompt or the enable mode and that tells you if you do show privilege it's a privilege 15. okay now if you look at the debug output see right here virtual and but what we actually looking for is the Cisco AV pair that was returned from ICE. So right here there is a little discontinue. We can see this is the one we typed into under the authorization profile shell priv level 15. Okay on the other hand if you try that with the account employee one and Cisco you see that we're getting nowhere and authentication fail. And the reason being employee one, sure your admin one was a part of network admin, but employee one is not. Okay, so employee one failed to match the authorization rule that we created and failed through all the way to the default, which results in the deny access. And we can confirm that going to the authentication detail page right here. Admin one successfully authenticated, but employee one was rejected. And this is per authorization profile. Let's go in and look at uh, admin one real quick. And the authorization profile that was matched was LM permit perf 15. And so right here at authentication results, this is where the attribute was returned back to the switch. Okay, but if you compare that to employee one, which was a failed authentication, it did not match our rule and went to deny access. And the access reject was returned to the switch. Okay, now let's create one more rule for our local account. So again, go back to authorization. But this time we're going to create conditions on the fly without using the library. So we go this time insert new rule below. You can do lm device admin. We'll say it's local. And here we can select user identity groups to the one that we created called LM Network Admin. And as far as condition, we go new condition advanced option and follow the exact same step network access, just like how you do it under the um, policy, condition policy elements. We're looking for authentication method equal path and then add attribute values radius and then um, NAS port type equal virtual. Okay, and then authorization profile. Let's say we just want the local account to be dropped into privilege one and not 15. So we can just go ahead and do permit access. Done. Save. Okay, now that has been safe. Let's clear the screen one more time. Do telnet. And then this time we do local one, Cisco one, two, three. And right here, we're able to access a switch, but we did not get privilege 15, like the admin one account. But we can still have access to the switch if you know the enable password. Okay, so now we have successfully provide different level of access to user that belongs to different groups, whether it's an AD group or a local group to ICE.
Again, coming back to our authorization policy page, you can see the difference between creating a condition as a policy element and doing that on the fly. You can see if you have a long uh, a series of conditions that you need for um, for matching a particular authentication type, then it might your your page might get a little cluttered. But at the same time, you'll be able to see exactly what you're matching, as opposed to if you were to configure that as a policy element, all you see is the name, and then you actually have to go to the policy element page, which, which might not be a big deal to look that up because you probably want to have that tab that tab um, on uh, side by side, right, like this, and then for the LM device admin AD, you can just go and look for that. So this is why I'm saying was was saying that having multiple tabs will be will become very handy. So you don't have to keep going back and forth between pages. Okay, one last thing I want to show you as far as the um what we can see oh, uh, on the authentication detail page. And let's take a quick look at the admin one which was a successful okay I just want to show you that on, on this page one of the one piece of information that you also get is the view right here for external groups it's not just the one groups that we are matching as part of our condition it's actually giving you the list of all the AD groups that the user is a member of so this particular user is not only a member of network admin, but it's also a member of domain users. Just wanted to point that out. But this particular field would not show up, although if you have a user that belongs to uh, on the Active Directory, but if you are not using AD group as part of your authorization policy, you would not see this particular field. Okay, for example, if you look at the employee one, although employee one is also an AD user, but the authentication did not succeed, so you will not see the list of user groups, although employee one is also under the domain users group. Okay, so that wraps up our video on authorization with device admin using Cisco ICE. Thank you for watching labnets.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video.